Let's go to the next representative of women and youth. That is none other than Amanda Vanura. Now, Amanda, the youth and women, that is what I have here. She's representing the youth and women. She's a woman as well. So what are you doing different to come in the space of public planning to reduce teenage pregnancies that stand at 25% now? Thank you. Thank, thank you so much, Chair. Uh, thank you for also the post of representing women and girls, and I take that. Um, looking at the environment we come from, and not far from my background, as uh, a young girl who grew up being abused by my father's brother in the same house, and he kept on silencing me because he threatened me because uh, if, he, if I reported him, he would, uh, my father would not get my mother from jail because there was some domestic violence and fighting and all that. So I had this fear in me. But when I went to the school that my father brought me after getting me from my auntie's place and transferred me to that primary school, there was, everyone looked at me like a leader, but I had this fear in me. and. The HM one day told me, you should be the head girl. And then head girls are supposed to be in P6. But now here I was in P4 and I tell me to be a head girl. And I had all these problems, I had to pay fees, and they were chasing me every day to go back home. I don't know where is this, these guys calling me. I don't have pocket money, they don't give me bread, I don't have that. So all these were on me and I was always in those. When it was time for class, I would be dozing. Children would go out, my colleagues would go out for break, for lunch. My lunch was my sleeping time because at home, I, would, I was always looking out for my brother and for my young sister to make sure they eat, to make sure they sleep well, and to make sure when daddy comes back, he doesn't beat us because he would come and beat us for nothing. So growing up in all that, when I reached P6 first term, I was nominated by the fourth head girl. And then this organization comes, it was actually for children by then, I've never seen them again. So they come and take us for peer education and you know, I have, I was so green, I didn't know anything about sexual reproductive health. All I knew was you have to be submit if you are to get married or you're in a house with a male part or male person, you have to just say yes to whatever they say because they are superior to you, the female. So uh, when they empowered me and gave me all this knowledge and told me that I had the right to speak up to do whatever I want, and I, I had the right to reach my dreams. I, I could do it, I had the potential. And I sat back after, the, it was like a month's training, and I looked at myself, I saw all these people looking at me, and they see a future leader. And I wasn't seeing that in myself. And that's when it took me, I like, I have to change my mind. If these people are seeing a leader in me, why don't I see that? And I decided to follow whatever someone would come and say, oh, you know you can do great in this. I was poor at mathematics. I was always, always, I would get strokes every day. Mathematics, biology, I was terrible. But it was shocking. Um, it was so I smoked, I in PLE. Most of course we failed. I failed. But PLE, I knew I was going to come maybe with a nine or what. And I knew when my results come back, I'm definitely going to the village, so I, I didn't expect much. But when the results came back, I was even the best in my school. And that really pushed me up. I was so happy because I think the, the fact that I believed in the people who believed in me, they made me believe in them, what they saw in me, it changed my mind. And then that inspired me a lot because there are many young people out there, even in my class, that were going through the same problems, but because they didn't have that striking moment in their life, they didn't have someone to believe in them, they didn't have someone to mentor them, they always, they end up failing or not believing in themselves. So as they gather in the for family planning and adolescent health, we not only talk about condoms, we not only talk about pills and IUDs, but we teach the young people to believe in themselves, to have a vision for their life. Even when at, you are six years, once you look at a child, they always, because even at infancy, children can tell, they can really identify that this person will beat me if I do this. And they'll always provoke you if they want to annoy you, because they understand. 
At six years, I was I was like a housemaid at home, washing my father's pants, those big, big heavy clothes. I will never forget because they used to break my hands. I would have to come back from school, kindergarten, nursery, um, prepare lunch and supper for my siblings, wash my uh, my siblings' clothes, uh, do everything that has to do to do the housework. But that was because I used to see what my mother was going through. And I was like, I should protect my mother. At that age, I was understanding. Children understand once you start mentoring them from childhood. And that's what we are doing as young people today. We, we say yes, we are, doing, we are talking about family planning, but to the young people, it's more than family planning. It's future planning. And it starts from the grassroots. If you tell the child, actually, this is a potty, this is the toilet. When you want to make poo move to the toilet and make it there. Leave them, they will do it. Because you believe them, you show them they can do it, they will do it. Once they grow up and they go on moving up, they, they know that, okay, so honey always tells me to do this, they do this, they do that. And when also someone from the outside does the same thing, they are going to grow up with that mentality. But what we have a problem with, our sisters and brothers in the rural areas, they don't have someone to really hold their hands, to mentor them, to inspire them, to tell them that life does not stop at P3 and the next thing is marriage. They don't have that person. So when uh, I, I have a friend, I she was born, I, I met her here, she was brought as a house girl, senior two. She said that her, man, her father wanted her and her sisters to get married off, but her mother refused. Because her mother had a vision for her daughters, she didn't want them to stay in the village in Sorotin. So she sent them to Kampala to find better life but stay in school. So when she came, she was like, my sisters are already pregnant, they are pregnant, but I don't want. And I realized this girl has a vision for her life, but no one is there to encourage her. If everyone, each, of one, uh, each and every one of us here, encourage a young person that they can actually achieve their goals, and you have to start by understanding what does this person want. Usually when the young people approach these big people, the people tend to chase them away because they maybe think they're going to beg them or maybe rob them. Sometimes these young people, all they want is comfort and belief in them or mentorship. Just tell them, do this like this, you make it. If they come and tell you they are failing in this, give them some advice. And then you see them improving. That is a milestone and that's what we do at Shikana Thank you very much, Amanda.